everybody always tells me that I look like a cabbage patch doll. Like, I don't want to look like that. <laughs> Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. I'm pretty sure you can read and you read the title so you know what the video is gonna be about. Me talking about my biggest insecurities. I did a whole video about um, loving on yourself and caring for yourself. And all of y'all left me comments in that video telling me how you love and care for yourself. But I felt like I should also do a video so that you guys know that everybody has insecurities. I can't wait to chat with y'all about it while I do my hair and makeup. Today's video is sponsored by Nadula Hair. You're gonna see me style this headband wig that is giving Beyonce, if I do say so myself. And it's just gonna be a fun little chat. So let's get started. So I have a journal that I pretty much write everything in. If you open this journal, it's pretty chaotic. I write down YouTube ideas in here. If I'm feeling a way about something, I write it in here because it just makes me feel better. Does anybody else have a journal? I thought it was Childish at first. Amy bought it for me when I was going through something and she was like, it'll make you feel better. And it really did. So I have some physical ones that I'm gonna start off with and then I'm gonna talk about like, more like mental, spiritual insecurities that I have. So the first insecurity that I have written down is my lips. If you've been a subscriber of this channel, you know that I um, got lip filler for the first time and I actually pretty much liked it. I actually really liked it. I definitely would do it again. It was my first time. So I think like when you get filler for the first time, it dissolves super fast. Um, so I think that they're already dissolving already. So I probably have to go and get another touch up. But yeah, my lips are a really big insecurity of mine because they're so small. Like they're just, it's not even just my lips. Um, because even if my lips were juicy, they would still be small. When I, like my lips are small. Like these are my lips. This is it. I definitely get that from my dad. My dad has really small lips. But for a while, I've always like kind of like overlined my lips and wear like plumping glosses and just do like a million things to make my lips look bigger. But I mean, nothing was as good as getting filler. And just for the record, I'm not saying there's anything with having small lips or a small mouth. I was just saying that I personally don't like it on me. This is my insecurity. This isn't, I don't look at other people and say, oh, that bitch got small lips. <laughs> need some filler. I looked at myself and said that. I don't, what everybody else does, it's none of my business. I think I'm beautiful, but an insecurity that I have is that my face is very, very, very round. Something else that I got from my dad. You know what? My dad got me fucked up. Sometimes even when I'm at my goal weight, I still look at my face and I be like, damn, my shit is round. Like my body looks good, but my face still looks like plump and juicy and it looks like a baby face. And that's why I'm 30 years old and people are still saying, oh my gosh, you're so cute. Like I'm a puppy. When somebody says, oh my God, you are so cute. I think you want to pet me. But bitch, if you say, oh my God, you're so delicious. I think you want to taste me. That's what I want. I want that bitch, I'm grown. Everybody always tells me that I look like a cabbage patch doll. Like I don't want to look like that. I'm going to put my last two physical insecurities together because they're kind of in the same category. My weight and my boobs. If you watch this channel, if you watch me at all, you know that I've had two brush reductions and I am so happy with the result that my second doctor was able to get. However, I still think that my boobs are kind of big, but I, I can't get a third brush reduction. I can't because at that point, I probably will lose all nipple sensation. And on top of that, you can't, I was an H cup. So you can't go from an H all the way down to like a B cup or an A cup because the shape of your boob will look crazy. Like you'll look insane if you try to go like that small. So honestly, where I'm at now with my boobs is probably the smallest that I'll be able to be ever. A lot of the times, like I said, with my face, when I lose a lot of weight, my boobs are still kind of big. So sometimes I feel like my boobs make me look 
a lot bigger than I actually am. I was like, damn, like my body really does look good, but my boobs still look so big and they're making me look larger than I am. My weight period is something that I've struggled with for like a very, very long time. The struggles that I've had with my weight and the way that it fluctuates and the obsession that I have had with it before has gotten me to a point where I will not take any sponsorships that have to do with weight loss. I'm not promoting any flat tummy teas. I'm not promoting any pills that will say that you'll lose weight or suppress your appetite and just different things that causes an unhealthy obsession with your weight. I'm not saying don't use those things. If those are things that you use, whether you wanna detox, whether you wanna do weight loss, use them. I'm not saying that. Some stuff I probably will still use. What I'm saying is I'm not promoting that because I don't wanna promote a lifestyle where someone is absolutely positively obsessed with their weight because I know how that feels because I've been there before. All right, let's move on to my more, let's say like mental, spiritual type of insecurities that I have. Cause those are the ones that'll fuck you up. So the first one I have written down here is my um, financial independence or lack thereof. I grew up with a silver spoon in my mouth. I'm not gonna sit there and try to like sugarcoat it and act like I lived this life that I did not live. And I lived a very privileged life that other people may not have been able to live. I understand that. However, I will say that because that is the reality of what my lifestyle has always been, I am just now figuring out how to have financial independence and I'm 30. That's sad. I've stated before in my assumptions video that yes, for a very long time, my parents paid for everything. Honestly, my parents will probably still pay for everything if I asked them to. It didn't help me much that I have a girlfriend that if I ask her to, if I need her to, will pay for anything. And I know that that sounds like a great thing to have like all these different support systems. And I'm extremely grateful because everybody doesn't always have all these support systems, but it has caused me to not know how to pick up my own pieces when I fail. I walked around for a very long time not having any regard for anything because I never really too much had to worry about consequences in the financial sense, if that makes sense. I'll just use an example. This has never happened before, but it's just an example. I, if I go to Vegas and gamble all my money away, like I don't have to worry about that because I have people that I can call that are just gonna send me more money. I never had to really be responsible with money. And now that I'm kind of like making my own and have really tried to stop really asking people for things, it has really, been a train wreck like I'm like I'm not gonna lie I'm still kind of figuring it out as I go I know that if I call on the people in my life that are my support systems and that do love me that they would help me with anything that I needed but I had a conversation with myself I really sat back I think when I was maybe like 27 28 like this is how old you are and you really don't take care of anything on your own. And that's kind of sad. And that led to a really, I wanna say careless personality. Like I didn't really care about anything. And I'm not saying that in a good sense. I'm not saying like, oh, just carefree, carefree in a, in a sense that I'm carefree because I won't have any consequences if I do something stupid that involves money. Like I had no hustle in me at all. I just would ask for it. And then I got to a point where it's like, damn, you a grown ass woman. You should really be uncomfortable asking people for shit every time you want something. Like I really got tired of, ooh, these shoes are cute. Let me call my daddy. Damn, I really just want to go on a trip. Let me ask my girlfriend to pay for it. I know that that sounds like the life to some people nowadays, but who the fuck as a grown ass woman wants to go around asking people for shit every time you want something? That's crazy. I'm definitely still a work in progress when it comes to that, but I have gotten 
so much better. I actually have responsibilities now that will cause big financial consequences if I don't manage my money correctly. And even though I really still get insecure about this subject, I have to always think back to where I started and where I am now. Actually, shout out to the people in my life who have let me fail at stuff a few times in order for me to figure out how to fix it on my own. Okay, I can talk about this particular subject all day, so I'm gonna move on to the next thing on my list, which is my future. Really insecure about where my future will be because like I said, I got such a late start with even like this YouTube thing. It's really been paying off and I can't wait to see where YouTube takes me. But because I just started being consistent with this and really seeing the results of it, I don't know where I want this to take me. Like what would be the next step after this YouTube thing? I don't wanna be on reality TV my entire life. So I do see that road ending really soon. But when it comes to YouTube, and this actually kind of being my full-time job, where is this going to take me? Not knowing where I'm going and not really having a plan for it is very like scary to me. It's very scary. Some people come on YouTube and know exactly what they want their career path to be. Once I hit this many subscribers, then I want to do this. I want to do this. And I want it to end up being this. I don't have that. I don't know. I just know that doing this makes me happy. Am I still gonna be doing vlogs at 60? I mean, I could. But then is that elevation? I don't know, see, so many unanswered questions, I don't know. I actually wanna hear from y'all. I want y'all to go in the comments, tell me your biggest insecurities, how you overcame it, or how you're dealing with it right now. I really wanted to do this video because I think that it's important that everybody know that everybody has insecurities, everybody. Everybody, the people who you wouldn't think have insecurities, have insecurities. I think the biggest thing is not letting your insecurities consume you or take over your life. Like, I have these insecurities, I have more insecurities than this, but none of this consumes me. They don't make me feel less than, they don't make me feel like I'm a bad person, but they are there and I think about them from time to time and I think that everybody should know that that is normal. You are human. If you're watching videos or if you think a celebrity has like no insecurities or you're looking at the next bitch like oh my god like she got her shit together. She's fine. I know like I just wish I was her. Know that that girl has insecurities too. I really want to thank you guys for tuning into this video and I really look forward to having a really good positive discussion about some of the things I talked about and even some of your insecurities in the comments. So thank you for tuning in today and I will see you in my next one.